There's no cure for singleness because singleness is not a disease. Uh, <laughs> bro, I mean, I, I have it right here. Now, that's question number 11, man. What are some ways singles can set expectations early in a dating relationship? You already ahead of me, man. We're going to go there, Devon. <laughs> I know we're going to go there. I got you. Yo, what's going on, family? Welcome back to the show. It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. We're here at the table, and I'm so pumped because you know how we do it, you guys. There's three R's, real, relevant, and relatable. And today, we're going to have, I'm going to say, is going to be a real and relevant show uh, because I have my big brother back on the show to get today. He needs no introduction. He was on my show last year, completely crushed it, um, and he has a new book coming out. So anytime, uh, people who I look up to, people who I get wisdom from, from anytime they are doing something, I have them back. I have to have them back on the show uh, so I can support them and help get their message out. So let's jump straight into it because I have my brother Devon Franklin is back in the building. What's going on, man? Yo, what's up, dog? How you doing, man? man? It's always good to see you, my brother. Man, it's always good, man. I, I know you out there traveling the world, man, and so I, I won't keep you too long. Last year, you blessed you blessed us, um, and every time you know, um, you're know you on the show, man, you blessed us. I said, yeah, let me get it back on. I saw you had your new book coming out, Thank so I you. reached out to you and said, yo, bro, let's yeah. get you back on the show uh, and promote this <laughs> Here book. Here we are. Yeah, because, I mean, the title of your new book is called Live Free And I'm sitting here and I'm on your website right now, and I, I'm like, amazing. The tagline, it says, one moment of inspiration can change your life forever. I'm committed to helping you change your life for the better forever. And I'm like, yo, I, yeah. I, I, let's let's have this conversation. So I want to jump straight into it because here on, at, at the table, we don't like fluff. So I want to go straight into it. And I literally <laughs> wrote down some questions after reading this book uh, that I really want to make sure that I, that I stay true to uh, because I believe your yeah, answers yeah, are going to help us. And so here's the very first right question that I, that I wrote down, bro. And, and I'm being real here. Again, real. <laughs> bro, you're a black man. Okay, you're a Christian, you're a son, yes. you're a brother, you're an amazing husband, you're an amazing friend and an author and a Hollywood producer. All these things yes, put in your public eye, right? How do you deal with the expectations of everyone putting things on you? You know, I deal with it in, in a number of ways. You know, one, understanding what the expectation is. You know, like first and foremost, when you list all those different things, all those different things come with an expectation. Yeah. And I have a pretty keen understanding of what those expectations are. Mm -hmm. The key is to not feel the pressure mm. and to decide how I want to meet the expectation relative to the various title or role I may be playing. Because a lot of times what happens in my experience, and one of the reasons why I wrote the book, is because we all feel various pressures relative to what's expected of us. Yeah. And then instead of trying to understand, okay, well, what's what do I expect of myself? Yeah. And what of the expectations that are expected of me do I actually agree with and which ones don't I agree with? Instead of making that assessment, we just try to meet everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And become everything to everybody. Yeah. And we wonder why we're not happy and we're stressed out and we're we're discouraged because we can never be enough to feel enough, yeah, right? Yeah. We can never do enough to be enough. And so when it comes to all the different things that I am and all the different titles you just listed, I am understanding of what the ex their expectation is from the outside, but I don't allow that to determine the expectations that I set for myself. Mm. And that's been the key to managing it. Just because someone expects something of me, I don't automatically just do that. Mm. I say, well, okay, I understand the expectation of what it means to be a producer. Okay, great. But you know, I'm gonna do this in the way that I feel called to do it. Ooh. So it's really important, really important to not allow those outside pressures to then become the internal pressure where we never actually set an expectation for ourselves and decide which expectations work and which do not. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you talk in my language. I think when I got in this role here at Ramsey, you know, uh, there were a lot of expectations that I felt. Uh -huh. um, you know, being a public figure, you know, having the, the several followers and uh, being an author and being a speaker and being a man of God and <laughs> being this. And I'm like, yes, yes, sir. <laughs> how do I, how do I please everyone? And, and, and here's the thing that I've learned, man, is that I, I began to become unhappy. And in your book, bro, this is, yeah. this is the part that hit me. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming on the show. 
I, I got to ask you this question because you believe that the root of unhappiness is unmet expectations. Now, I don't want I don't want to steal mm-hmm. your joy, so I need you to break that down for us. <laughs> what do you mean by that, man? Because that that shook me, and I was like, yo, is that why I was unhappy yesterday? Is that why I was unhappy during this season? Because the expectations that I had were, were unmet. Like, yeah. break that down for us, man. How, the root of unhappiness is unmet yeah. expectations. Yeah, because see, here, here's the, the thing with an expectation. This is why I wrote this book, because I want anyone reading this book to stop uh, mindlessly just living based upon expectations that you haven't evaluated and that you haven't set for yourself. So a lot of times when we are unhappy, mm. we're unhappy because we were either expecting something to happen and it didn't. Something was expected of us and we couldn't meet it. Or we've set these arbitrary barometers of success about what needs to happen in a certain period of time. And then when it doesn't happen, we judge ourselves incorrectly. And as a result, we're not happy, right? When you think about the happiness of of your life or my life or someone that's listening or watching right now, okay, well, why are they not happy? Because certain things that they want to happen or have not happened. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about an expectation, expectations are the secret software that run our life. We don't even realize that we aren't actually reacting to life events. We're reacting to our expectation of life (laughs) events. So if things, uh, you know, exceed our expectations, we're happy. If things don't meet our expectations, we're devastated. So we're not even reacting to other people. Mm. We're reacting to our expectations of them. Mm. You know, it's like, okay, you talk about, you know, uh, having the podcast and, you know, being with Dave Ramsey and all the, these things. It's like, okay, you know, you would, you could make the, 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 the false judgment mm-hmm. of like, what does that mean? Oh, well, if I don't have a certain number of downloads, come on, man. then that means this. Come on, come on. Well, who said that? Oh. Right? Who said that it means this? <laughs> you, you're, you're making a conclusion. Right? So you haven't met a certain expectation that you didn't set to begin with. And we'll get into how to set expectations. <laughs> and so why you're not happy is because your expectations are unmet and unset. So the problem is how do we deal with the expectation, right? Yeah, because yeah. if we could remove an expectation or we could set an expectation, it could instantly improve our happiness and contentment. But as long as we do not set expectations, We are not setting ourselves up for success. And when I say success, I'm not just talking about success externally. I'm talking about internally. So I believe that success is peace. And when I'm at peace with who I am, when I'm at peace with where I am, I am successful. Too often we're talking about success in terms of, you know, the money and the car and the job and all that stuff. Guess what? You can have all of it and have no peace. I would argue you are not a success. And one of the reasons why we have no peace is because we have these unmet and unset expectations that drive us crazy. <laughs> and it's time, once and for all, to learn how to set it, man. Oh, my gosh, man. If y'all just now tuned in, my boy is already dropping some, some jewels. I mean, already. I mean, Divine Franklin, you guys, listen, we're going to put all of this information um, in the show notes, so don't even worry about looking for the link for the book right now. I want y'all to get this wisdom that he is about to give us um, on this this episode. As a matter of fact, I want you to also to share this episode. If you're listening on podcast, share it with a friend, send it with a friend. If you're watching it on YouTube, thank you so much. Uh, you see two good-looking mm-hmm. black brothers on the show. Um, <laughs> uh, so share this with your friends. <laughs> um, but I, I, let me ask you this, Devon, because... You're talking to me. I'm going to be selfish. I, I think you're right. You know, I work with Dave. Uh, we have an amazing team. Um, I'm always um, comparing myself to my, com- not my competitors, but other people who are in my field. And mm-hmm. I'm putting these sure. expectations on me. Like, okay, I, I need to have this. Oh, I need to look like this. Okay, I need to sound like that. Oh, wow, wait, I didn't get this many views on this show, but they got this many views on that show. So I need to... Bump up mm-hmm. my expectations over here. Bump up my expectations on my team. And, and, mm. I, and I started feeling myself like I, I'm not free. Like I, I feel like I'm 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm bounded to my expectations and the world's expectations. Heck, I'm the money guy. And sometimes I make money mistakes because I feel as if I gotta please everyone else's expe- expectations and look a certain way. I understand. So, so here's the gold question. How do we how do we live free? What does living free actually mean? 
Yes. Yeah, so, so this is gr great, great question. And thank you for your transparency, because I believe transparency leads to transformation. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, when you have a platform uh, like we have, and we have an expertise in an area with that expectation is that we know everything. Yeah. That's absolutely not true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are learning every day. <laughs> That's 100. Um, so, you know, we got to make sure everybody understands just because we got some knowledge, we don't have all knowledge. Right. right? We're learning every day uh, even more about the areas that God has gifted us in. So when you talk about living free, this is the definition of living free. You and I, we live free mm -hmm. when we are not under the mental. Mm hmm emotional mm -hmm. or physical control oh, of man. anyone or anything. Hold on, you gotta say that again. I'm, when I'm we type live that free, uh -huh. I'm, a, a, yeah, I'm, a, I'm repeating it, I'm repeating <laughs> it. When we live free, yeah. <laughs> we are not under the mental, yep. emotional, or physical control of anyone or anything. This is what it means to live free. So when you talk about that expectation, that is, an, if you have an unset expectation, that then becomes the form of control. Yeah. yeah. Because that expectation that you have not set, that when I have unset expectations, then I am under the control emotionally. Yeah. Sometimes physically, right? Sometimes energetically from that expectation. So go, we go back to the example you just mentioned, uh, you know, okay, so I have this podcast. I have this expectation, you know, yeah. that I need to get certain number of downloads and I'm looking at all my peers and they're doing X, Y, and Z. Well, first and foremost, what happens is that everybody is in their own journey against themselves. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm looking at somebody else's track, right, I'm going to take my focus in a direction it's not supposed to go. Yeah. Because what I'm expecting is like, oh, I want to expect to be like that. No, no. The expectation is how do I become the best me, do the best work that I can do and trust that that's going to work and be enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so so often one of the reasons why we don't feel enough is because, you know, when we were raised in, you know, childhood, there were all these expectations put on us. We learned a performance-based way of living. Yeah. Oh, good job. You got A's on your report card. You're a good boy. <laughs> You're a good girl. So we learned, yeah. oh, if I just meet everybody else's expectation. Yep, yep. And I keep comparing, oh, that's my path. Mm -hmm. And then as we get older, we realize that's not true. So good. Those are actually fake goals. And I talk about that in the book, creating yes. real goals versus fake goals. So yeah. the idea of living free is to say, I live free when I set expectations for myself. Mm. I don't live by anyone else's expectation of me. I live only by the expectations I choose to set. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone else's expectation of me is bad. Someone can have an expectation of me and I agree that, yes, I actually agree to meet that expectation. Okay, great. Wonderful. But the key to living free is to make sure you are not living by any expectation that is not of your choosing. Wow. And then once you choose an expectation, then you got to learn the process to set your expectations, which I know we'll talk about. Yeah, but yeah. that is what it means to live free. So, so when you say set our own expectations, right? How can we determine yes. if the expectations we've placed on ourselves are actually healthy for us? Because yes. like, that's okay, that's a question great, for great, myself, great. you know, because it's like, man, is <laughs> right, that a healthy right. expectation, Anthony, to have this goal? Like, I, I have an expectation, Devon, like I'm, I'm single, man, and I've been struggling in the dating world. And I have this expectation okay. on me that I, I should be married by now, but I'm struggling mm. in the dating world. And I'm like, is that mm. is that a healthy? Like, how do we know what's a healthy expectation mm. and what's an unhealthy expectation? Right. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to deal. With, I'll answer that question, and I'll deal a little bit with your date. You brought it up, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go there in a minute. Okay. Uh, you, hey, you open the door, hey, so we just go, go kick man. the door off the hinges. Hey, listen, for a minute. man. We're going to keep it real, doc. I'm just being real. I, ain't, I'm struggling, bro. I, I'm, yeah. I'm making yeah. mistakes. You know. And, I and mean, when you when you say struggle, what does that mean? What define define struggle? When I say struggle, bro. Without putting my information too much, we can talk offline deeper. But to to the world struggle, mm -hmm. like. Um, I, I, okay, here, here's a good one, man. Um, I'm 36, 37 years old. I'm stuck in my ways because I've been by myself for a while. I'm a little selfish. And it's hard for me mm -hmm. when I'm dating to take that apart so I can build together, you know? And so mm -hmm. for me, it's just hard to find someone um, that gets it and that 
I just want to, you know, just change for. But I'm like, mm, but okay. I, but it's like, you know, I hear in the world, Anthony, you're, you're 36, you're 37 years old. I'll be 37 July 1st. That's why I keep saying th- uh, 37. Yeah. But, you know, my pastors and, and my friends, my mentors and even coworkers, man, you're young, you're successful, you know, you, you know what you're doing in your life. What's wrong with you? You know, you're, you're single, mm. you know? So I'm like, the expectation mm. is like, dang, I should be married by now. Man. And I'm like, wow. is that a healthy expectation? Because sometimes, wow. bro, I get I get kind of depressed. I get kind of lonely. I'm like, yo, what's mm-hmm. what's going on? And then it forces me mm-hmm. to go out there and probably date people I shouldn't be dating, man. I'm just gonna be 100. Right. Hey, we're I keeping understand. it real. I appreciate at the table. keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> but talk, talk to us, man. Talk to me. Talk to us. Because I think there's other people out there you. too who are like, okay, yeah, he's I right. Got you. you know, I'm. I'm, t- yeah. I'm 30 years old as a woman, and there's a guy out there saying, because I have a baby and, and I'm not married, you know, you, you, sh- you should be married by now, you know, mm-hmm. or this and that. So mm-hmm. how do we know what's healthy for us, bro? Because mm-hmm. we, we we need some help. Man. Yeah, man. Listen, this is why I wrote this book. So so Live Free, this book is 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 divided into four different sections. Yeah. Um, so to learn how to set expectations in every section. So okay. there's personal, yep. there's cultural, yep. there are relational, and there's professional. Okay. In the relational section, one of the chapters is called There's No Cure for Singleness because singleness is not a disease. Uh, <laughs> bro, I mean, I, I have it right here. That's question number 11, man. Why are some ways singles, what are some ways singles can set expectations early in a dating relationship? You Great. already ahead of me, man. We're going to go there, Devon. <laughs> I know we're going to go there. I got you. And I'm going to answer your question about whether you know it's an expectation you should have or not. But I'm, right. I'm, I'm, hit, I'm using this to answer the, the bigger question, which is how do you know if you should have the expectation or how you shouldn't? Yeah, yeah. Here is, here is, here's, here's what's, this is so important. It's such a good conversation. I pray anyone watching or listening takes this in. Yeah, yeah. Because what you're describing is what happens in the culture. Mm. We feel the outside pressure to live a life not of our choosing. Mm. Because how do you know if it's an expectation you're supposed to have? If, if it's an expectation that's healthy, it brings you joy. Okay. Okay. If it's an expectation that's destructive, it brings you pain. Mm, mm. When you go to the gym, mm-hmm. you endure the stress of the gym, but it's a joyful pain. Yes. It's a joyful stress, right? Yes. Yeah. Because you are becoming better. When you go and do something that's not really in your heart to do, it's just pain for the sake of pain because it's not in your spirit. Yeah. And so when you talk about this idea of everybody saying you're 36, 37, okay, where is it written? Tell me where it's written mm. that by this age, you're supposed to be married. Mm-hmm. Where is it written? Mm-hmm. What about just living, being free, experiencing life? And if marriage is supposed to happen, it will happen mm-hmm. when you are free. Mm. When you are, when you freely give, you can freely receive. And that reception will then bring in whoever's supposed to be. Right now, you're, when you're not living free, you can't date, right? Mm. Because you're not free. You're dating from a motivation based upon somebody else's expectation, not your own. And this is why we have a divorce rate that is so high. So good. Because everybody feels the pressure to rush into something. They have no idea what it is. So good. An expectation that if I'm not married, then there's something wrong with me. And I know you're based in Tennessee. Yeah. I've been in, you know, I've been in Tennessee. I've yeah. been in Nashville, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, man, shoot, everybody gets married 18, <laughs> 19, 20 years old. No disrespect to my Nashville for, folks. For sure. But you get what I'm saying? It's a culture that, yeah. that values marriage and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But the reality is that we're all on our own path. Yeah. And we have to resist the temptation to live for someone else and their expectation when it's not the expectation we want to live by. Yeah, yeah. And so how do you know if it's a good expectation to have? It either brings you joy. It brings you joy. How do you know? It's the wrong expectation. It brings you pain. Very simple. If you're, if you're navigating, should you do an expectation or should you meet it? And I'm going to say a non-professional expectation because I want to get there because there's yeah. a difference when we talk about professional expectations. Yeah. But when we talk about a personal expectation or relational expectation, you got to identify, does it bring me joy or pain? And if it brings you more pain than joy, I would argue that that's an expectation you should not be trying to meet. 
So let's go back because I've been following you for years, man. We we've known of each other for yeah. for for years, and you, you are a preaching machine. Like you you bring the word, and just learning your story and and, and studying your 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 uh, past. You've been preaching since you were fifteen yeah. years old. So that's right. Uh, and that's inside right. the book, I know your family was like, "Yo, you need to be a pastor," uh, but you are <laughs> right. you, you are. I think you're pastoring, but in a different way. You're in the industry. Yeah. You're out there in the marketplace. You're creating movies. You you're married to an amazing actress. Mm-hmm. So so your yeah. life is different. How did you deal with the expectations of your family and peers saying, "Yo, you need to be a pastor," and you went this way? How did you articulate? How totally. did you feel? How did you deal with that personally? Just to be one hundred with me, like some people say, like Anthony, uh, that's not your calling to go to Ramsey Solutions. It's it, you, it's not. Yeah. You know, you need to go over here yeah. and, and pastor. Uh, you're not going to be welcomed yeah. over there in, in this particular world. That's not your calling. Yeah. And if you step outside of your calling, yeah. God's not going to be with you. And I was like, mm. yo. And so that that came with me here because I'm like, yo, what's happening? What's happening? So it was like, how do you deal yeah. with uh, pushing away other people's expectations when you know where you need to be going? Yeah, you know, this is a, it's a great question. Um, you 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 gotta care a whole lot less about what somebody thinks. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, that's because it start because see what happens is when I care too much mm. about somebody else's point of view, there's a temptation to allow their point of view to become my point of view. Ooh. Growing up, you know, when 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 I was you know getting clear in revelations that I was supposed to go to Hollywood and. You know, everybody was like, no, you need to go into ministry. Or they were like saying, don't go to Hollywood. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the devil's playground. All this type of stuff. <laughs> right? It's like, no, you can't do it. Here's, here's the, the reality when you assess it. Okay. So the advice you're giving me about what you think God is doing, uh, have you prayed on it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. before you gave me that advice? Mm-hmm. Two, did God consult with you about my creation? Mm-hmm. Did he actually tell you what I was actually created to do? Yeah, yeah. And if he didn't, if you have not prayed on it and he has not consulted you, what makes you so confident that what you're telling me to do is what I actually should do? Yeah. I had to get to the point where I said, I love you. Like, I love my family. I love my church family. I'm from Oakland, California, you know, uh, in my church that I grew up in, Wings of Love, Maranatha Ministries in East Oakland. It's still there today on the corner of 78th and MacArthur. Everyone that said, do not go to Hollywood, go into ministry. Mm. I had to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you enough to do what God has called me to do. Mm. And I love me enough. Mm. I love me enough to go even if you say don't. Mm. Mm. Because I have got to go on this th- journey called life. Mm. I've got to go figure this out. And guess what? I might be wrong. Mm. And guess what? That's okay. Mm. But what I can't do is miss out on my destiny mm. because I don't want to disappoint you. Mm. And bro, this is the balance. Mm. Everybody is trying to not disappoint someone. And you know who gets disappointed the most? Mm. You. Yeah. Yeah. When you are trying to please everybody and you yourself are not following the destiny in your heart and the destiny God has revealed to you, the person that you disappoint is yourself. That's fact. And the for me, the vision to go to ho- the vision to go to Hollywood was so strong that I said, I've got to go. I might fail, you know, I might mess up, but hey, you know, I gotta go figure this out. And so I had to just stay clear of that vision. I had to stay committed to that vision. And I had to put myself in an environment to get evidence and confirmation if that's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And I would just say to people, look, pray for me. You know, if, hey, if you don't see it this way, pray for me. But what I can't do, I can't allow then you to be my God. Because mm. if I don't follow God and I follow you, then now you're my God. Mm. And if I let you be my God, then I can tell you what, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction he created me to go. Yeah. Because I, the only person that can get me where I'm supposed to be is him. Yeah. And the only way I get there is by listening. Yeah. And by going here instead of this. Yeah. So that's how I did it, man. I just had to tune everybody out. Mm. I had to go and see and experience for myself. And there's something else I want to say, you know, which is I think that that it's crazy, man. Look, we, we were raised in communities of faith, right? And we're part yep. of a community, community of faith, especially a Christian community of faith. And, and you know, it's like, the, this is the crazy thing about our faith. 
Jesus came to set us free. But then the way we're socialized, we get imprisoned. Yeah. The way we're socialized from a faith perspective is you can't do this and you can't do that. And you better be careful here and you better be careful there. And we are, we learn to perform for everybody. Yeah. And we're never free. Who the son sets free is free indeed. So if he freed us from sin, how is it that we allow ourselves to live in a prison of somebody else's thoughts yeah. and opinions about what we should and shouldn't do? Yeah. And this is why I believe our community is one of the most judgmental communities on the planet because people are not free. Mm. And if I'm free, guess what? I want you to be free. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm not free, then no, no, you can't be free either. <laughs> and if I was judged and I can't wear a certain thing and say a certain thing, then you can't either. Mm. So this is so important. I, I got to the point where I was like, listen, y'all go ahead and just talk about me. I mean, I, even to this day, I got people on YouTube that don't know me talking bad about me. And it's okay. I don't even get mad at it. I just wow. say, you know what? It comes with the territory. And I'd rather have the freedom to do what God has called me to do, even with the ridicule that sometimes comes with it. So than good. to live a ridicule free life, but not a free life. Yeah, man, you're talking good. Um, I want to challenge you all, challenge you all who are watching and listening right now. If you are in a season to where you're you're kind of fearful of the ridicule, you're you're fearful of what people will say. Um, mm. And so you're you're giving in to their expectations. You're giving in to the culture's expectation, but not the right. uh, expectation that God has for you in your life. Uh, I want you to just just write your name in the YouTube comments. Um, if you're listening on podcast, mm -hmm. jump over to YouTube. I want you to write your name. Um, and uh, I'm going to put my name on there, too. And I'm going to pray over the names uh, this week. Uh, this entire week. So uh, I'm going to give you this whole week. Put your name on there. Don't put what's going on. It's none of our business to know what's going on. But if I see your name, I'm going to say your name out loud. I don't care if it's Amen. a thousand people. I'm going to say it out loud. Um, say my name out loud. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be praying for you uh, because I believe what Amen. Divine is saying right now um, is real for a lot of us. Uh, we fall yeah. to, to please people. We fall because we care about what people say. And I think caring about people is okay. But caring about yeah. what they say about us, that's that's where, Ooh. you know, eh, it's, it's not good. Mm. It, it's, it's not good at all. So put yeah. your name down there, you guys, and, and I'm going to pray for it. When you guys think about your finances, a.k.a. your money, do you get stressed? Do you get anxious? Do you feel like, hey, where do I start? How do I begin? What do I do? Well, check it. I totally get it because I remember being 18 years old, being a young man, uh, living paycheck to paycheck, homeless, sleeping in the back of my car. I totally, totally get it. But I got something I want to share with you that's going to help change your financial future. And this is called Ramsey Plus. Ramsey Plus is going to give you this step-by-step -step plan, the step-by-step -step guide on how to change your financial future. Inside of Ramsey Plus, you're going to learn how to get an emergency fund, uh, how to get out of debt, how to start building wealth, how to start investing. We're going to teach you everything you need to know on how to change your financial future. So for right now, if you text the word AO plus, AO plus to 33789, I'm going to give you a free 30 day trial. Now check this out, you guys. Let me be real with you. All right. Can you think about what can happen if you commit to 30 days, what those 30 days can do for the next 30 years of your family's life and your life? Listen. I can't say nothing else. Text the word AO plus to 33789 so you can change your family's future. This is your boy, Anthony O'Neill, and I approve this message. In your book, this was so good. And it encouraged, it encouraged me, man, uh, because I, I'll be real on the show and said I've, I've made some mistakes in dating. Um, and hey, I have to, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm learning, man. I'm, I'm, I'm continuing yeah. to learn. Uh, because I do desire a wife, but you know, that's why I see a therapist to improve me. Cause like you yep. said, re every relationship Amen. is an awesome teacher. Was it teaching us more yes. about us, more about Anthony O'Neill and my flaws. And while I'm going through this singleness, 
the culture says being sig- single, there's something wrong with you. It's almost like there's a disease. But you say in your book that there's no cure for singleness because uh, singleness is not a disease. Break this down, man, for the people who are watching right now who are single. Is there something wrong with this, man? Um, in your book, you clearly say no, but uh, talk to us, man. Yeah, no, listen, uh, this is why I wrote um, this particular chapter in the book that there's no cure for singleness because singleness is not a disease. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, again, we go back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, One of the reasons why, you know, singles end up feeling so badly has to do with a lot of the pressure and the expectations of everyone else. And so the, the key is first and foremost, if you're single and you're listening to this, you you got to you got to unplug you got to get out of the matrix yeah yeah the same people that are pressuring you mm-hmm. to, and, and and asking you why they're single are the same people that are secretly unhappy in Ooh. their marriage and you don't even know it oh you would be shocked yeah. you'd be shocked to know how many people you look at and you think oh that's great in their marriage they they're very unhappy yeah so don't allow someone else's pressure to become your pressure we are all on a journey that God has set before us and all of us have different things that will happen on our journey as long as we stay on the path. Mm -hmm. And if you are single and you're listening to this, the only reason why you're feeling badly is because you're putting an expectation and you're judging yourself based on it. What if we just right now remove the expectation? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not married. And what? Mm -hmm. Am I alive? Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I healthy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I, am I in a house? Yes. If you're listening to this, it's because you have a device. Okay, great. I can, you know, I, I'm making resources. I can pay my, my bill. Okay, great. So there are so many things to enjoy and to be grateful for, right? And the more gratitude, the, the better attitude. And when our attitude is right, then we position ourselves to receive whatever God has for us. So if you are single right now, stop buying into the myth that there is something wrong with you because there's not mm. at all. And here's the other thing. What happens in my experience, and you know, I'm the middle child of three boys and I was married. Um, my younger brother, my older brother got married first. Mm. My younger brother got married second and then I got married last. And I, and bro, I had the same kind of experience, you know, where people are like, oh, what's wrong with you and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And here's what I realized was that if I had tried to rush and chase my brothers and got married in my 20s, I wouldn't be here right now. Wow. Because I would have been on the wrong path. Right, right. With the wrong person. Right. Just because I had the, felt the pressure. Right, right. When we consume our singleness with the question of why aren't I married, mm. we disrupt the ability to appreciate the power of being single. Ooh. Right? Singleness is filled with so much power. Right? I can set my own schedule. I can study. I can become better. I can work out. I can improve my health. I can improve my wholeness. I can heal. I can do all of these things so that whenever it's time for love, right, I will already be practicing the love that I want to receive. Mm. Here's one of the keys, man. We want someone to love us, Mm -hmm. but then we don't actually do the things that show that we love ourselves. And then when you're single, a lot of times, if you are unhappy and single, I promise you, if you're listening to this and you're watching this, I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to say. If you are unhappy and you're single, you will be unhappy and married. Because if you're not happy now, you will not be happy then. Here's why. Because happiness has to be an internal function that Mm. comes outside. Mm. Right, I find the things that that contribute to my happiness, and I am the keeper of my happiness. In a relationship, too often we outsource what's internal to someone external. Wow! And then we have the whole saying, "I want you to make me happy," or "This person makes me so happy." Right? Be careful who you allow to make you feel any way, good or bad, mm. because then you empower them to have power over you. Yeah. So what happens if the person that that you love that loves you so much? They get busy or one day they don't do the things that you want them to do. Oh, wait, now, wait a minute. What goes, what happened with your happiness? Yeah. This is why if you're single, what are the things that make you happy? Become happy now. Yeah. Because the happier you are, the more content you are, the more you love yourself now, the more you're going to be able to better identify 
Who can contribute to your happiness when you actually are dating someone that you begin to get serious about? And then you can also evaluate what love looks like. We want people to love us and we don't even know what it means to love ourselves. <laughs> don't make no sense. How, you, how somebody that, that you just met, you know you your whole life and you don't know what makes you happy. You don't know how to love you. And then you want somebody to help you to come figure it out. So good, man. It, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So if you're single, I want you to have hope. I want you to have hope. That's why I wrote this book. Yeah. This is why I want you to live free. Yeah. Do not put yourself in a prison of someone else's expectations and making you think that because you're single, you're less than. No, you're not. You're whole. You're single because you're whole, period. Yeah. That's yeah. what single is. That's yeah. what it means, whole. You're not a half, yeah. right? Yeah. When people talk about, oh, two people, when people get married, it's two halves. It ain't two halves. You better pray you don't marry a half a person, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you want a whole person, all right? You want two holes coming together, right, oh, man? So if you are single right now, I want you to be encouraged. This can be the best time of your life. Don't allow someone to make you feel badly. There's nothing to feel badly about. Uh, marriage and love will come and it's time. Just stay on the path. Keep being loving. Keep being happy and keep trusting God. Man, you know what? Devon, I wish I had an hour show, man. I'm trying I'm trying to talk my team into bumping <laughs> this thing up to an hour show. You need uh, it, bro. Because, you I need mean, it. bro, I, I have like 10 more questions that we couldn't get through, but <laughs> I, I'm going to end on this one because I know you're in New York with your wife and y'all doing some big things out there and I got to get ready to do uh, the actual, the Ramsey show um, with Dave. So um, oh, I got one last question don't. for you. Uh, and then I want you to tell people where they can grab your book and we're going to drop all this information in the show notes. So go check out the show notes. But uh, in all the aspects of life, you know, when it comes to careers, when it comes to their professional life, their relationships, their careers, one of the key components that you believe, and you talk about this a lot in your book, and I love it, man. I, I cannot stress how much I love this guy's book. Um, I got the advanced reader copy. I'm just telling you right now, when it comes out, I'm purchasing like 10 Thank of you. them and giving them away for gifts this summer. But you said something that was so good. I want you to break this down for us um, as we exit the show. That one of the key components to living free is when you and how you properly align your goals with your expectations. How do we do that yes. in our particular spaces? Yes. It, the, the, the key is, you know, we go back to how you set expectations. Is it realistic or unrealistic? Okay. Mm -hmm. it's a, is it in my control? That's how I know. Yeah. Is it spoken or unspoken? Okay. If I need to communicate it to someone, I communicate it. So when you talk about a goal and you talk about an expectation, if your expectation is unset, you'll create a fake goal. Ooh. If your expectation is set, you'll create a real goal. Yes. How do you know if it's real or fake? Here's one of the things, and I could go on, I mean, we could do a whole podcast on this, but I'll give you a quick tip. <laughs> Too often, our expectation is unrealistic because we're trying to control something that's not in our control, which is called time. Mm. We create a fake goal when we say, this needs to happen by this age, by this date. And then when it doesn't, we say, I'm a failure. It's not going to work. What's wrong with me? So on and so forth. That's a fake goal. Why? Because we don't control the win. Yeah. God does. Yeah. Yeah. When, when things happen in our career, in our life, when we get the promotion, when we go to the next level, that's all God's business. Yeah. When we talk about a real goal, a real goal is, uh, and a real expectation is, I show up every day. I have the right attitude. I'm disciplined, right? I'm studying to show myself approved. I'm being positive. I am being optimistic. I'm staying in faith. Those are things that I can expect. Why? Because it's in my control. Mm. When certain things manifest, that is completely up to the time mm. that God put in place before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you look at a seed, you put a seed, in a ground, and, and so like, so I love doing tea, right? So I, I use lemon. So whenever I squeeze lemon in, the, in, my, in my tea cup, the seeds come out. Mm. Here's, here's how we operate. Imagine us, we're one of those seeds. Oh man, I wish I was a lemon tree. Oh man, I wish I was a lemon tree. Why aren't I a lemon tree? You are. The only thing is you have to be put in the right environment and give it time. <laughs> so can that lemon seed expect that it is a tree? Of course. But can it expect that it's going to become a tree tomorrow? No. Yeah. So to make the goal that I'm going to become a tree tomorrow is a fake goal. Facts. To make the goal that eventually I will become everything I'm destined to be is a real goal. Mm -hmm. And I can expect that over time, everything that I am will ultimately manifest as long as I put myself in the right environment. As long as I stay positive, mm -hmm. as long as I stay prayed up, mm -hmm. as long as I stay faithful, as long as I stay, you know, uh, uh, happy, mm -hmm. content. All of the things that I am 
will manifest. Mm. Too often we're worried about what we already are mm. instead of allowing the process of living free to take us on a journey of becoming. Man, listen, Devon. Man, listen. Uh, uh, man, I haven't gotten this 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 personal, man, in, in a minute. Definitely not in 2021. Wow. And um, yeah. I, I appreciate your wisdom, man. Um, for those yeah, of you all listening you. and watching, if you do not follow Devon Franklin, uh, follow him. Um, he's going to bless you spiritually. Um, he's going to bless you and really help you land your careers. Um, if you're in that, you know, television space, that producer space, that, you know, main uh, media mainstream uh, space. The man is flourishing. Um, and he is creating mm. uh, pathways for other young people to come and do what he's doing. Um, so before we let you go, bro, how can we get your book? How can we support yeah. you? I know it comes out May 4th. So I'm excited for you. Uh, New York Times best-selling book right here. I'm believing hundreds of <laughs> thousand copies sold. Uh, so where can people go Amen. to support you and, and get a copy of the book? Yeah, man, listen, they can go to my website, www.devonfranklin.com. They can go right now, mm -hmm. order their copy. There, We got all the different retailers and however you want to receive a book, you can get it there. Yeah. And we also, you know, right now the clock is ticking because the book's about to come out, but we do have some free resources. I did a live free masterclass. It's an hour long teaching that they can have, that they can study, that will help them navigate the tips and tools uh, that I mentioned in the book, but they can go to DevonFranklin.com right now, order the book, get Live Free Masterclass, and you can start living free right now. Yo, we're going to put all of his links in the show description, uh, his book links, his social media links. I want you to go follow the guy. Uh, go let him know you saw him on uh, the table with, with your boy AO. Um, just show him some love. Show him some support. Repost the books. If you see him in the airport, um, I've seen him do it before. He'll stop and just sign the book. But if it's if 100 of y'all, uh, only 10 of y'all go up to him so he can <laughs> get through the airport and get to his next destination, man. Uh, but, Devon, thank you so much, bro, for rocking out with us. <clears throat> your heart your passion you, at helping people for helping people is amazing. Um, you've, you've convicted me in areas to get better. And so I appreciate you for your wow. heart and your Amen. ministry and uh, support your wife, man. She's still in my top three um, actresses you, out bro. there, bro. Uh, my first time seeing your wife appreciate on the screen that. was Biker Boys. I was like, yo. Yeah. Yes. I was like, come <laughs> on now. Let's go, Megan. That was right. my first time. And then, you know, a few years later, uh, she, she married you. I was like, oh, man, Devon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, man. Sorry, was, brother. I know you missed out. Hey, man. No, no, Doc. Hey, man, hey, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy I missed out because my brother got him a queen. Amen. And uh, y'all's yes, y'all's marriage has sure. inspired us single people. And, um, wow. and, and, you know, when we met out there, all of us at uh, Bishop Jake's Project Kitty, and just seeing y'all doing ministry together, it's just amazing, man. Wow. So uh, celebrate wow. your you. queen. Tell her I said hello. And uh, we'll talk I soon. I will. We'll talk soon. But, yo, this your boy, Anthony O'Neill. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the table with your boy, Anthony O'Neill. We kept it real, relevant, and relatable today. We do this every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time right here on YouTube or on the podcast. And so thank you so much for rocking out with us. Go get Devon's book. I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.